Hey guys, Lord of Flames here, and well, decided to do a review video with Mr. Bay Cougar's awesome 80s retro horror movie called Zalgo. But this one is colorless. It's one of the best because you gotta get used to retro and 80s, 60s, 70s stuff with black and white. Well, only that the 60s, 50s, those days only have those type of looks of the, the films and besides Mr. Betty Kruger loves the retro stuff in the time he always does and that's why he decided on having this one being a colorless 50s movie style but even showing the little scenes even some um, alternative scenes for the movie if Jeff was there or Having the actors saying different lines. And that's really a good thing because who knows if these lines were meant to be in the actual movie. If these were actually important or maybe not. But even replacing the music as well. Because one time when... Uh, darn it, it's really hard for me to remember all the character names now. Because it's been a year since last time I watched Salgo and... Uh, I'm looking at the credits right now, since you're not, since I'm not showing the video yet. Corey Jarvis, who is mostly a crazy character that I ever seen. I mean, Jeff is might be the craziest one of all, but seeing these Jarvis families who are acting like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre family. Yeah, the scene with him uh, killing one of the awesome badass characters. Officer Mace. I mean, he's a pretty awesome character. I, I like him. He's the best. And he would act with the kill scene. I mean, replacing the music and having it the scene similar to um, these 20s, 1920s or uh, 1910s movies at the time that there wasn't used to be audio voice lines at all. Just music and then having what the characters are saying is showing the lines on the screen it's like that so Zalgo Catalyst is a brilliant masterpiece movie with having it now being made during the 1910 to 20s 30s 40s 50s and 60s and but with the color version it's going to the 70s 80s stuff the looks of these scenes are still look same, but some of them would replace some of the musics, and which I already said that, but even part of the opening for introducing Father Pleasance might only sing the same lines, but maybe extra lines for it. Maybe I forgot if he doesn't, but it's a good moment there that doesn't show the music, sad music at all, but showing the theme, the theme music of Zalgo. And, um, yeah, these musics were mostly found in audio library but some of them on our youtubers uh, channels which is alright and some more scenes I'm looking at is with Jeffrey Keaton showing a few more scenes of him because there ain't much scenes for Jeffrey in Zalgo lately because this is a prequel to the house of Jeff the killer because everyone wants to know how the hell this all started because the House of Jeff the Killer skip all of these times that it suddenly introduced Jeffrey Keaton coming back for unknown reason, not sure how, and more kills been, and he we're going back to the house, the Keaton family's house, and we need to know how this all started before we uh, get to the event of the House of Jeff the Killer. So that was, that's why Mr. Bay Kruger tried to make tons of Tons of prequels or spin-offs taking place before the event of the House of Jeff the Killer, after Jeffrey's dead. And I love it because it seems like the House of Jeff the Killer is like a short series before the rest of the sequels. It's like the House of Jeff the Killer became like a short series with these are uh, stories and movies come together. And which we never heard know or about. Okay, back with Jeffrey Keaton, and which that scene that Sister Bates' death was been replaced of Zalgo, but 
to Jeffrey Keaton instead. But the strange stuff, like the wrath of Jeffrey Keaton shows a little bit scenes from the opening in chapter one of After Jeffrey's Dead with Jeffrey Keaton coming out of the graves, coming out of the, the coal mines. So it shows a bit that, but we don't know on how he got to the house. Because we're, there weren't any scenes where Jeffrey Keaton just like walking around the streets or going back to his Keaton house. I mean, we didn't see any of scenes at all. Like, if that would be like a secret or it would be noticed in the Humanizers 2 or I don't know, like, it would be strange if I truly want to know um, more of these scenes if they weren't even shown or if they were used to be in the script but been removed due to uh, secret things for another time, I don't know, but I still want to know how Jeffy Keaton um, got to this, got back to his home, like, if it, um, okay. I was talking a little bit about Dehumanizer 1, um, but the Wrath of Jeffy Keaton Chapter 1, the opening, for those animations, that looks amazing, I love how the anime have done it, okay, with the one coming back with the coal mines after Jeffy said, with Jeffy Keaton uh, coming back to the, coming back to life after the zombie, but, so had its own mind to remember, but anyways, I think the Humanizers 1 was first before Zalgo, because of course it is, because looking back to those early scenes with Officer Maze and Father Pleasant's uh, cameo appearances, so yeah, um, there weren't any much more if Zalgo um, was meant to tell Jeffrey Keaton to just go to the go back to his own home as like a perfect place to um to kill many people and put them in the graves or something to collect many bodies but anyways um more scenes later um back with officer mace which this scene didn't happen for some reason i mean it would be i think it's really cool to have it shown in the actual movie in the color version I mean, there's got to be something about Officer Mace because there might have been histories with Officer Mace and Father Pleasant because we all know what happened with Father Pleasant's backstory, what he just did to his wife. That he just killed her for no because he's kind of drunk. And Officer Mace was, in fact, an awesome detective who tried to, to know about Father Pleasant's true identity. Um, his backstory and which he is right officer Maze is really good at solving the mysteries and all that I mean who needs because we do need an awesome detective I mean this officer <laughs> this badass character officer Maze I mean he should live okay I mean oh my god he should live cuz like it's not like he being Acting like a bad guy who tried to uh, hunt down Father Pleasant or whatnot, but I mean, because Father Pleasant was in fact like a short, like a, a villain at the time. Because, what, which we already know before, and Officer Maze is not like his, is, he is not like his brother, you know, that Ur Maze from the Needles and Smiles and that Jeffrey, that first Jeffrey Kid in the original Jeffrey Killer animated movie, um, which how I don't like that character. I mean, he's, he's too disturbing, too weird. But for this guy, Officer Maze is amazing. This guy from the Zalgo movie is awesome. Because if I wish, I wish for Officer Maze to get himself a spin-off movie or something about it. I mean. He deserves, he deserves a spin-off movie or an audio drama or something for his own story or something. I mean, who in fact loves this character? I mean, Officer Mace is amazing. I mean, we might see him more in Needles and Smiles or who knows, with the final scene with Father Pleasant before he left the house and he said a different line, 
without making it sound like he's a badass, but acts like a normal guy. If he does, if he would like to say, Kiyasi killed the cat. Does the script like have like multiple lines of which alternate scenes were or what? I mean, I don't know what the script has. If there are like cut versions or cut scenes, like cut lines, cut moments or whatnot that never been shown in the movie, never shown in the film, like they weren't even filmed. I mean, was there actually other scenes that never been shown in, like there were in fact made in the script but never been uh, shown in the movie version, the live action? Like I mean, a scriptwriter finished writing the script and director or the producer decide to cut any type of scenes that are not not good to be used for the movie. So they were like erased or slashed or something like that before they were even used for a film. Something like that. I mean, was there other things that were never been shown when color after colorless was been uh, released? This one, uh, before the cult scenes happened, um, during the time on night six, with after that, well, Far Pleasant and says reading a magazine, saying the same lines, but there's like an alternative delete scene with uh, Corey, uh, side, but in the color version, he's like cool. It's like he just doesn't care, he just pretend saying or whatnot, but in the colorless. Which he is meant to act crazy a bit because that's what he is. So he decided in the colorless version, he uh, he decided to just laugh right now. But this one seems a little bit funny a bit. He's like, he started with the laugh and then just stopped immediately while doing the stare like this. <laughs> I mean, if you decide to look in the scene um, for yourself, go ahead. I mean, if I would just show it right here. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of funny. I mean, who knows if the Jarvis family were the most funniest characters of all? I mean, they're kind of crazy, but they're kind of funny as well. I mean, who knows? Like, yeah, mostly. I thought the colorless was gonna show um with the one the um Corey's father with. Grandpa Jarvis, who is mostly mutating, which I didn't know that really happened in the movie. Like having him like a version of the thing, like the, the thing for him to transform or mutate it into a thing or whatnot. But after he was been punched by Far Pleasance and he runs away, but I don't know what happened. Like remember when I did a kill count video? with Zalgo movie, um, which I always thought that he might have died because, because remember the blood of Jeff the Killer with that final fight with after Zalgo has been defeated, all the zombies or whatnot who have been uh, controlled by Zalgo because they have all those type of blood or something with Zalgo that made them being controlled. So with Grandpa Jarvis drinking too much of those Zalgo bloods or whatnot, um, it could have killed him as well. So who knows where Crabba Jarvis has been through a lot after uh, Zalgo, like, we didn't even know what happened to him if the Humanizers 2 would have just showed about it, like, will Grandpa Jarvis, will, is Grandpa Jarvis going to come back for the Humanizers 2 or maybe Zalgo 2? Because I remember there's one of your videos, uh, after the wrap of Jeffrey Keaton Chapter 2 or, I mean, after Chapter 1 or something? Which you were talking about Zalgo 2, or you were talking about something else? I tried to remember, but still. If there is going to be Zalgo 2, and if it, Grandpa Tarvis will come back, if we want to know what happened to him. If this time he'll be much more mutated, if his face is going to come deformed, or something else. Because we only saw um, with him having his uh, fingers, having like a like a squid legs or something, um, or the Zavulu, something like that. Um, 
So yeah, so that will go kind of with an interesting movie, interesting one that we uh, want to see delete scenes, which there were after the behind the scenes and some of these were very interested and they were meant to show if they were very important for these characters or maybe not. There's got to be more delete scenes of Jeff and Keaton though, okay? I mean. There's gotta be a reason about that part with Jeffrey Keaton coming out of the coal mines and, uh... Well, of course, he's mostly start being shown in Dehumanizers 1, and then Dehumanizers 2, and then we get to Dezalgo. So I guess that's the right timeline. The wrap at Jeffrey Keaton decided to change the year date, because Chapter 2 was, well... Chapter 1 and Chapter 2 were released in 2017 because they didn't want to mess up the timeline because they were meant to come out in 2016 because having that same year with the blood of Jeff the Keaton or the blood of Jeff the Killer and the rapid Jeff the Keaton were in the same timeline. So that was meant to be like that way and so they decided to change it just in case and that means the blood of Jeff the Killer would have taken place in 26, 2017, so who knows they will give enough time for more uh, spin-off movies or a series or something for the, the House of Jeff the Killer would take like two years or two years later or something. While Zalgo Dehumanizers were taking place in one year after something like that. So yeah, folks, and Mr. Betty Cooner, you did amazing great creating this movie, and I can't wait for more for next year because the coronavirus. But of course, you're working on news and smiles, which is which is good. Well, folks, I hope you enjoy it for for this review video, and I was just talking about these things that this colorless Zalgo movie is mostly. 50s or 30s movie version of Zalgo, which it could be, or so, Mr. Ray Cougar, what type of year do you decide to have the Zalgo color list to be in? Like, is it like being part of the 30s, 20s, 50s, or something? Because since it's colorless, so it's because the black and white movies that were only last ended in like in the 60s, or maybe early 70s so yeah um I don't know which year you decide to choose on what this movie is trying to look like maybe you choose all of it I think because in the color in the color version you decide to have 70s and 80s together in this one movie like I noticed overlay uh, static of the 70s version and then we get to the 80s because I kind of knows a bit one in the cold scene that has the 80s VHS overlay screen and then some others with the 70s static so I try to think if I got it right hmm I don't know what Zalgo 2 is going to be like or maybe Zalgo 2 is already the humanizer like a prequel I don't know, like, is it? I don't know. So, if that go to... If that go to... Decided to confirm. Um... I don't know what story is going to be about. Maybe we'll come back as far... Maybe we'll come back with Father Plassens. Or... If not, then we have to find... Get used to another character who is new. Another actor, or... Hmm. Maybe Robert decided to become a main character, like, again, like, like a dehumanizer, but who knows if it, this character Robert is going to be like, is going to do, do something different? I don't know. If not, then I don't know, like, I tried to get it right, but maybe the humanizer is in fact Zalgo 2 or not? Hmm. Anyways, folks, I hope you enjoy, and Mr. Betty Kruger, still, you are amazing for having Creepypasta back, back being horror and scary again, because there's been issues a lot with these, or fangirls, these, or 
people who try to take over creepypasta to make it not scary because creating these other type of creepypasta characters who are not really good with their own story which doesn't make any sense and now decide to have them being with other characters of shipping and that's stupid that's stupid I don't like that but thanks to you and David Neer and the rest of you who decided to make creepypasta scary again because I don't know what happens if Creepypasta decide to be like a retro 80s version. Like, what if did that happen? Like, what if that really happened? Like, not because if Creepypasta decided to become like an 80s retro version or something. So yeah, I have nothing to say, but this is awesome. And I hope you like this reviewing video, folks. I try my best to make it sound like a good review. And Zalgo Colorless is an awesome movie with the delete scenes that really sound very important for the scenes for these characters if their story would be interesting for a sequel or maybe not if they might have the cameo appearances for the audio drama version who knows like how um, this one comment I have back in in my first in the Jeffrey creepypasta fan film movie I made a year ago with after part one release um this one comment say about my character Kyle who that this youtuber wants him to uh, have a, like a cameo appearances in your uh, audio drama series but I don't know if that would work so I decided to just kill him off in that time but of course I didn't kill him just have him like put him to another timeline or something but still he he will come back to his to the real timeline which will which the idea for a story for that Jeffrey Free movie with Heal might come back a year after the blood of Jeff Killer. So yeah. I have nothing to say, but I hope you enjoyed this video, folks. This is the Lord of Flames here. I'll see you guys next time. Bye folks. Have a wonderful day.